Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about moral hazard. We're talking about the more mathy version of moral hazard. Here's what we're going to cover today. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's quickly review this table about moral hazard versus adverse selection, where we know that moral hazard, we're talking about actions. So we don't know maybe if we're the insurance company. We don't know if someone who wants insurance is a risky driver or a safe driver, or and if they're going to drive more risky or more safely after getting insurance. So we have incomplete information compared to imperfect information under adverse selection. The solution for the moral hazard problem is what we're gonna call inducements or incentives, where we're going to try and persuade the person we're giving insurance to through carrot or sticks, through punishments or rewards in order to drive safely, which is what we want them to do. But in our example, we're going to use a sort of more fun example where I talk about pilots and hot reserve. Hot reserve is where a pilot is sitting at the airport and they can be called to work a flight or not. We're gonna pretend that that pilot is sitting at home when they get that call and they can either choose to call out sick, which is gonna be S or accept that reserve call. Now their utility for the pilot or U sub P is going to be a function of their wage or F of W minus some cost of their decision. The cost of their decision is set up by the airline. It's not something pilots have control of. We're gonna say that the cost of accepting is higher than the cost of calling out sick, where if you accept, you have to go to the airport, you have to get ready, you have to actually work. And if you call out sick, you get to sit on your couch. Now the U bar or the reservation utility or the outside option is just going to be the utility of quitting. And we're gonna set that to be zero. Now we're also going to say that the airline doesn't actually know if the pilot is sick or not. It's they only see the action. They're not sure what's really going on. And there's a chance, little p, that the airline finds out the pilot is faking it. They're not actually sick. They just called out sick so they didn't have to work. So we had this little game tree where the pilot calls out sick in quotes where there's a p chance that they were faking it and they get fired. There's a one minus p chance that they are actually sick or don't get found out and they have a payoff of f of w minus c of s or they can accept and pay the cost of accepting. So the question here is if we're the airline, how do we set the cost of accepting and the cost of calling out sick so that reserve pilots don't fake being sick? Well, we have a couple of constraints and you'll recognize these constraints from the adverse selection problem. We have the incentive compatibility constraint, which says that the utility to the pilot of accepting needs to be greater than or equal to the expected utility to the pilot of calling out sick, which we can just write out. There's a P chance they get nothing and a one minus P chance they get the utility of sick. We also have an individual rationality constraint, which says that, well, the pilot would very much like to be employed. So the utility to the pilot of accepting needs to be greater than or equal to the utility of quitting, which is zero. So here's where we're gonna stop. I don't really wanna go through the math. It's a lot. Comment below if you would like a full run through of a moral hazard problem. Otherwise, if this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.